right. Also on the agenda, of course, uh, for those of you that like to, um, for entertainment purposes only, keep updated on the point spreads of these games. That LSU, of course, uh, playing practically a home game is what a three-point favorite against FSU. Yeah, three-point favorite, and I mean traditionally for those, once again, for entertainment purposes only. Three points is usually what the home team's always going to get. So you're going to get three points literally just for being the quote-unquote home team. So with that being said, the argument comes there and there that this game is a push game, that they legitimately think that both Florida State and LSU are on the same level. I think that's interesting because you have an LSU team that played in the bowl game last season. You have an LSU team. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that win one. I think you have a Florida State team that they're saying could compete with you know, a team from the, the the vaunted SEC, a team that beat Florida last year, a team that, you know, had their moments of looking decent last season, I think was better than their, their, their regular season record indicated. So I think there's a lot of confidence. I would not be surprised if Florida State can come up with a big win in the opening game against Duquesne. I wouldn't be surprised to see that line move closer to even – or the, there could be a chance that Florida State could end up coming into that game as a favorite, depending on what happens in that Duquesne game. So I, I think you're going to see a point where Florida State's going to want a win, but Florida State's going to want to send a message to LSU that, that it's going to be an interesting ballgame on September 4th the New Orleans. It's certainly a marquee matchup if you just look at college football brands. You know, look at the brand names, not what these teams have brought to the field in recent years, because both of them are very much in transition. And it's going to be an interesting weekend because you've got, for example, and we all know Mark is an is a Ohio State fan. Ohio State's playing, and I know, shocking folks, but Ohio State's playing a Notre Dame team, top five matchup in the opener in Columbus. I think Ohio State wins that game, but I think Notre Dame's a good team. I think Notre Dame's going to give them a good ball game. You've got a game down here in the state of Florida, in Gainesville, where you've got a Utah team who's coming in, who won the Pac-12 last season, played Ohio State pretty well in the Rose Bowl, and they're coming in as a very slight favorite over a Florida team who was 6-7 and seven last season and lost to UCF in their bowl game. I think Utah's not getting enough respect in that bowl game. So I think that there are some interesting matchups in this first, in this quote-unquote week one of the season. Uh, but I think Florida State LSU is going to be an interesting game because I think you've got an LSU team that I think is coming in very confident, thinking we've got Brian Kelly, things are going to turn around and whatnot. And you've got a Florida State team who, if Florida State comes into that game and beats LSU in New Orleans, you know, hot, hostile crowd. Yes, there's going to be about 30, 35,000 Florida State fans there, but it's going to be a mostly LSU fan base, mostly purple, purple and yellow fan base there. And if Florida State can come up with a win, you're two and zero going into the bye week. Time to get rested after after what's going to probably be a rough game against LSU. It's going to make the season very interesting. At that point, I'm not guaranteeing anything remotely regarding an Atlantic Division championship, but it makes things a lot more legitimate that Florida State could be an eight win team or maybe even a little bit better. <laughs> 